once in a name. That by which we call a rose, by any other name, would smell as sweet. These are the famous words of Shakespeare. They resonate past the test of time. In fact, almost more than 500 years. And so, it is with these words that I want to say hello to all of my fellow Gen Z people who are in the audience today. Or should I have said centennials? Maybe I could have used digital natives. I've heard that one before. Or even the I generation. These are just a few of the proposed names to call our generation. But what is the purpose of this almost non-exhaustive list of labels? As Shakespeare said, what is in a name? Because despite all of these labels, despite what we are called, there is one element, one truth, one sweet smell, which links all of us, no matter our name. And that is that we are living in an information age, in the information age. Today, I want to talk to you how, in a world of seemingly overwhelming information, we can use this powerful resource to shape our future. But also how, through a little bit of curiosity, we can challenge it and go places never been before. Curiosity is a core element of our human nature. As a toddler, we all explore the backyard. So I want to start at the beginning of my story, which is right there. As a child, I would explore the backyard. I was so incredibly curious, and to an extent, I still am. That's the beginning of my story. This curiosity, I didn't know what its name was, and it wasn't until I got to school that I found out that this inherent part of me had a name. Its name was science. My parents, when I was younger, would always implore me to speak. For the first year of my life, I would make incoherent babble and apparently refuse to use the English language. Mum would say, please say, Mum, Mum, Mum. Dad would say, please say, Dad, Dad, and it was, you know, that little competition. But it wasn't until I learned one word that I wouldn't stop. And that word was why. I used to pester my parents and my teachers alike when I got to school with this one question. But they would never give me the answer. They encouraged me to go find it for myself. And so I would spend hours relentlessly looking through information to try and find the answer. But when I didn't find the answer, they encouraged me to do my own experimentation, find my own information. And that's where my scientific journey began. I started doing science projects, something which I was inherently curious at the time, and so the topics were incredibly widespread. Each year, their complexity and their length grew. And they have taken me all around the world and on an incredible journey along the way. What I found is that this curious part of me, I could explore through science, and I could explore at length through science, which, again, is just another name. When I didn't find the answer, I performed my own experimentation. But in this world of overwhelming information, it can sometimes be hard to know what to look at. I found this even in my own personal experience in science projects. One of the projects that I did was looking into radiotherapy and the effectiveness of different types of shields and metals to block radiation. All of the information around me said that lead was going to be the best shield. So, I could have just accepted that. But I wanted to find out for myself. 
So I did a very large amount of testing. And what I found from this was actually quite surprising. I found that at the skin surface for radiation therapy, copper is actually 20% more effective at shielding than lead. Now, I was very excited about this result. So I toddled off to my mentor at the time and presented it to them. They told me that I had to be wrong. Something had to have gone wrong in the experiment. This, you know, didn't make sense. This wasn't correct information. I was a little disheartened. But in that moment, I had the decision to either give up or to, again, let my curiosity win me over and find out why. So I did the latter. I performed my experiment many, many more times and meticulously went over every single detail. And I actually found that my results weren't wrong. Copper was more effective at that skin surface. This was actually one of the biggest discoveries for my scientific journey and led to the creation of something called Smart Armor, which is a device for breast cancer patients going through radiotherapy. It stands for Scale Male Armor for Radiation Therapy. So imagine a medieval armor protecting the woman's healthy breast from excess radiation. This has been just one of my scientific endeavors. I've done research into the efficiency of solar panels, water filtration for developing communities, how to effectively deliver medicine for children, even protecting seedlings in the garden without using pesticides. The topic of these science experiments have all been incredibly widespread, but if there was one element that they all had in common, a common thread, it was that they were all driven by a natural curiosity. They were all driven by trying to challenge the boundaries of the knowledge and challenging the boundaries of what was possible. Francis Bacon wrote in his book in 1597, knowledge itself is power. Now this quote is also difficult to attribute if it was actually him who originally said that. Variations of this are present in almost every single culture and in so many different languages. And that very attribute that we can't figure out the beginning shows how it's a part of our core and inherent human nature, this curiosity. And it's also linked to the actual definition of our word for science. The word science came into the English language in around the 14th century. It was derived from Latin, which I won't pretend I can pronounce, but it was the Latin word for knowledge. It has since, over time, evolved into the definition that we have today, which is the study of the natural and physical world. But as a person in science, I can, I can definitely attest to the validity of both of those statements. It is, in fact, both obtaining knowledge and it is also a study of our world. It then must be asked, though, if this concept of knowledge, as it was originally intended, is still relevant today, how has growing up in this information age, accompanied by a digital revolution, influenced the way that we interpret information? One of the biggest differentiators for our generation has been this rise of social media. I would say that social media has definitely impacted and both influenced the way that we shape and see knowledge. Because where before we had all of this information, the access to it wasn't as fast. It may not have necessarily have been as reliable, and not everyone had that access. But now, we all do, with the powerful devices in our pockets. This is simply the norm. This access to knowledge has been something that, before even we were born, existed. And for the example of this, you just need to look at Google, which was founded in 1998. And ironically, I had to Google that date. We've been able to source information endlessly, even consume it, for lack of a better word. And so we need to be using this resource to shape our future. But we also need to be mindful of the 
pathways that we're learning it through. Informal learning as we know it is so much more prevalent now than it has ever been before. It means that everyone is now a lot more aware of the issues which are facing our world and is also more aware of some of the solutions that are being used to solve them. Social media has aided in the rise of scientific literacy, which for someone like me is very exciting. But it's also had its accompanying challenges. We've seen more politicization of science, an expedited spread of misinformation, as well as people being more willing to take what is presented as scientific fact as a truth, just in blind trust. And so we need to be careful. Whether this is something that's taught or whether it's something that we just need to be more aware of in our daily life, it's certainly a topic that we are grappling with in our society. So I want to encourage you to think and reflect. When you see this information, what do you accept as true? What do you go out and find for yourself? I also want to encourage you to challenge this information. See where that takes you. And I finally want to encourage you to be curious about the information. That will take you places that no one has ever been before. After all, it was Albert Einstein himself who said, I have no special talent, I am only passionately curious. So, I speak to my Generation Z people, or Centennials, or if you would prefer to be a rope called a rose by Shakespeare. It doesn't matter what we are called. It doesn't matter what people name us. Living in this information age, I am passionate about curiosity. What about you? Thank you.